All right, look at this. We are here. It is Saturday morning, uh, almost 8.40. We're starting a little bit later than uh, anticipated. However, um, we've got a lot of information uh, that I want to cover today. Um, I want to recognize we've got Bank uh, from Spain. Uh, we got Fidlov all the way in from Colombia. Uh, people will start joining. Grab your coffee. This morning is all about the Italian roast Segafredo um, straight from Italy. So uh, today we're going to be talking about freedom. Uh, and number one, freedom isn't free. And we all have to remember that. Um, the second thing that we're going to talk about today is protecting your investments. And we're going to get into what that really means, because when we're talking about investments in this case, here on this show, here on the chain, here on the how to review, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency. We're going to get a little bit more into depth because last week we talked a little bit more about Nexo. We talked about Celsius. Uh, we talked about all the different uh, variables that are going on on Bitru, on MyCred. What is this all about when they want you to stake your digital asset and put it up so that you're borrowing against your digital asset? What does all that mean? I don't know, but we're about to find out. Uh, and it's so, so critical uh, that we do find out. Um, and it's all getting ready to start right now. Welcome to On The Chain. All right. <laughs> so here we go. Um, we got this going on on the chain. Again, this is Jeff. We're getting ready to talk about Nexo. Before we get into that, I just thought it was a little bit, uh, you know, timely uh, to talk a little bit about freedom. Uh, I don't care what country you're in. Uh, because it doesn't matter whatever country that you find yourself in at this moment uh, we always have to understand that nothing is free and our freedom definitely isn't free um, and if it has ever been highlighted more so than ever i don't care what time uh, frame we're talking about this is the moment in time when you realize that freedom isn't free and as i was thinking about this um, i've been trying to figure out how am i going to open up uh, this conversation today. Now we've got people in here from Spain. Last night we had people from Australia and Europe and the US and all over the place. Um, this morning we've got uh, people from uh, Spain and Colombia and elsewhere as usual. Um, it's a global phenomenon. We have a global community here on the chain and we love our global family here on the chain. But you know what? One thing that we don't have exposure to in other parts of the world is the US Constitution. And the reason why the US Constitution is so critical, because this is now the foundation of what freedom uh, can really represent. This is the, this is the everything uh, that freedom is built on. And there are a couple points that I'm gonna bring up. And, and why this is so critical is because our cryptocurrency investment is rooted, is deep rooted in the freedoms and in individual freedoms, individual liberties uh, to make that determination as to where you're gonna invest and how you're gonna invest, um, how you're gonna defend your life, how you're gonna live your life. So what's up, Eman? Uh, great to have you here. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get into this a little bit more. Um, we're going to get into Nexo. We're going to get into Celsius and all of that. Let me start out with a quote here. Now, um, I don't know, you know, as, as we get into other parts of the world, I grew up overseas. Um, so I didn't have, when I was growing up, didn't have a lot of exposure uh, in, in many of those uh, primary years uh, to American history and, and to uh, American civics. Uh, but um, what's, what's key here. Um, as we hone in is a, a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Now, this is probably the most apropos time to read this quote uh, from Thomas Jefferson. Um, and, and, and this might not be an exact quote, they, you know, but it, it, it could be a paraphrased quote. Um, but to me, again, this is so critical. Um, the quote here is, if people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take, their bodies 
will soon be in a, as sorry as state as their souls of those who live under tyranny. So think about that, digest what that means, um, because this is probably one of the most important quotes um, of our lifetime, especially right now, especially given the, the situation that we're all finding ourselves around the world as a whole, especially as we're seeing the powers that be are trying to make determinations over what medicines actually work and which don't, uh, which uh, health alternatives work and which don't, as they try to squash uh, the uh, the effect, the, the actual impactful um, solutions while they're propping up big pharma uh, to make billions and billions and billions of dollars off of our health, uh, trying to educate and tell us based on their conception, um, what is good for us, not based on what is really good for us. So again, this quote and digest this because this is so critical, and then we're gonna immediately move into uh, the crypto space. If people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take, underscore that what medicines they take, uh, because we do know just based on, uh, based on the past few months, as we've seen a a campaign of misinformation rolling out across the world, stemming out of China, as they've rewritten history, as we've watched the media rewrite history, as, we wa as we've watched YouTube and Facebook and Twitter banning people and removing and censoring information uh, from doctors that have been investigating this space over and over and over again. We've seen this censorship. You have to ask yourself, why are they doing that? Why are they trying to push a certain agenda uh, and pushing certain medicines uh, that aren't even in play yet and removing medicines that have been around for decades that have uh, proven themselves to not be harmful yet according to the powers that be all of a sudden they are harmful so if people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take their bodies will soon be in as sorry a state as their souls, as the souls of those who live under tyranny. So think about that. This is probably, again, one of the most uh, uh, critical and poignant quotes of this time right now, right here as we get started. So what's up, uh, Farshad? Uh, good morning. Good to see you here. What's up, one uh, rough freaking? Uh, good to see you here. Uh, glad to see you guys bouncing in. I'm going to get back to some of these quotes that you guys are putting up there. I think it's really important. We're going to dig a little bit further into why are we concerned about what's happening over at Nexo, over at Bitru, over at Celsius, over at MyCred, and the many others. What is the primary concern? Is there an ulterior motive uh, as far as do they have some nefarious purpose, uh, preconceived nefarious purpose in their investment structure uh, to where they're utilizing false marketing tactics in order to bring people in, in order to uh, steal uh, people's invested cryptocurrency? I don't know. We're going to have to dig a little bit more into that. Um, but let me let me um, uh, go through and and as as I you know, as, as we're talking, um, as we talk about, you know, the significance um, of, of our investment, if we think about the significance of what Bitcoin brought to the stage uh, 10 years ago, decentralized investment in ourselves, uh, allowing us to free up and get the freedom away from a, a, a system that is extremely centralized, uh, that, has, uh, that has extreme influence um, over uh, the powers, uh, the powers of your your investment, over the powers of how you can take care of yourself. So we saw this, uh, we saw this this concept, right? We saw this uh, Bitcoin concept uh, come out of the uh, the ashes of the uh, economic meltdowns uh, back in 2008, 2009, 2010, and we see what happened over this past decade. You know where that concept came from where we are today, completely different place. Because what we do know is that we can't live in anarchy. We still need to live in a structured environment. We still need to live within freedom uh, under what, you know, we have to look back to, you know, freedom of the people, um, a government of the people. Uh, and here in the United States, uh, we have that and we have to make sure uh, that, we, that we keep that here.
Um, so, so, uh, so here, here's one more point. Um, and then we're going to get into this because we want to dive into what's going on over at next. So we want to dive into what happened over at Bitrue. We want to look at and see if we're seeing the same exact things over at Celsius and elsewhere. Um, but, but look at this, this is, again, you guys can't see this. Here you go. You can see a little bit of a print. If you live in the United States and you don't own a constitution and you haven't done your, your, your diligence to educate your, your children of the significance of what this constitution represents, um, you haven't done your job because the schools in the United States haven't done their job, uh, by educating, uh, the people, uh, and our children of the significance of what this constitution means. And this is the very constitution uh, that we have brought uh, time and time again to other parts of the world, uh, you know, in, in the hopes of, of creating uh, freedom. As we're also seeing, you know, these, this representation of what cryptocurrency is bringing to us uh, as, as investors and around the world as a mechanism of liberty and freedom, economic freedom, uh, to, to make your own choices, uh, to build the own direction for your own life and that of your family. But it's, it's all rooted here. And if you look at it and we're, we're looking at the Bill of Rights, you know, but all you have to do is look at the First Amendment uh, in the Constitution. There's a lot here that you need to read and digest. I just read you a quote from uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, that is so poignant in today's day and age. Uh, but this First Amendment is also very important, uh, very critical of everything else uh, that we're going to be doing right here on YouTube. Uh, and elsewhere um, around the United States as you see people rise up. And, and I've had multiple, multiple conversations with people that I work with in other parts of the world. They don't all understand uh, why we're seeing protests erupting, erupting around the United States. And it's all based on this First Amendment, um, which, is, which is everything, which is your freedom of speech and your freedom of assembly. Um, and so, um, it, it, so it's, it's, just, it's just so... Uh, so critical. Unfortunately, I don't know. I don't have enough uh, light right here on, on this spot. Uh, but uh, Congress shall make no law uh, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people uh, peacefully to assemble and in petition uh, the government for a redress of grievances. Now, this is so important, the freedom of speech. And then you have the second amendment that comes right after that, which is the right to bear arms. And most people around the world don't understand when we talk about the second amendment, what it represents. The second amendment follows the first amendment because the second amendment is here in order to protect the first amendment. And there's a good reason why the second amendment came right after the first, because those like Thomas Jefferson understood uh, the co concept of tyranny and they understood that this first amendment cannot be defended if it weren't for the second. And then when we talk about uh, this other book that I've rep that I've mentioned many, many times, which is labeled Demophrenia, which is the schizophrenic nature of a democracy to which individuals living in that democracy are willingly giving up their freedoms, willingly giving up the First Amendment, unfortunately not so willingly giving up the second. However, there's intense pressure that's been levied against people in this country, in the United States, to force them to give up the second. As soon as you give up the second, you lose the first. We've already seen very significant uh, evidence of the first being given up uh, over the past few weeks, but yet people are marching and assembling uh, on state capitals around the United States in order to defend the first. Um, and so this, why is this so critical? Why do I bring this up? Because this is the base concept of why decentral decentralized investments are so critical. You know, why is it that Bitcoin rose up? It's because it was a liberation from the tyranny um, in order to bring the power back to the people. Um, and this is what it's all about. So, uh, you know, this, so, you know, do we want it to, to dwell in anarchy? We do not. You know, the, so, so we have to remove that anarchy thought process out of it. It still has to operate within the confines. These are the confines right here uh, of the Constitution because we are a civil society. Uh, within the civil society, we have to operate 
by rules. Um, and those rules, if you think back, you know, years and years ago, uh, based on the Ten Commandments, um, those Ten Commandments were were very important in the structuring um, of a civil society um, now rooted in a free constitution. So anyhow, that that's enough for that. Um, and let's let's move on. Uh, I want to go, you know, back into uh, I want to go back into the comments because this comment here, and I've got to point it out. And there's a lot of other great comments that you guys brought up here. Then we're going to dig into next, so because I know that's why you guys are here. We're not here for a civics lesson. However, as we gather around the world, um, I think it's important we get together and we understand and we educate one another about the foundations of freedom and we help each other make sure that we continue to exist in freedom, whether that's in our investment or in our life, in our political life, in our regular life. Uh, we want to break free of any external influence of tyranny in any shape or form. None of your business pointed it out great. You guys might not all understand the significance of what he's saying here when he's re when he's referencing Michigan and and that you probably saw it plastered all over the airwaves in the fake media, but the fake media portraying the uh, armed uh, protesters at the state capitol. Now, what you have to understand, is that in certain states in the United States, there's laws called open carry. And what that open carry means is that you're allowed to carry a firearm on your person as long as it's not concealed. When you have a concealed weapons permit, then you can conceal your weapon. Uh, and and can, you know concealed means other people can't see it. However, in states where they have open carry, that means that you can legitimately within your rights carry a firearm on your person, whether it's a sidearm or whether it's a, a, whether it's a, a, a rifle of, of some sort, but you're allowed to do that. Now, what's interesting at the state capitol in Michigan, a number of years ago, they passed a law which allowed individuals to bring their firearms, open carry, into the state capitol. So people didn't march there. It wasn't some armed you know, insurrection trying to you know, overthrow the state capitol. They were operating within their rights uh, to carry and to open carry on the state capitol uh, premises in a show of the Second Amendment and the First. Number one, freedom of assembly. The government is not going to oppress people's freedom of speech. So let me let me just point that out. Um, now, man, there have been so many great comments in here. Yeah, I wish I could put them all up there because we got so much uh, to get into um, and and to really start digesting what's going on again with Nexo and others. So I'm so glad that we got uh, you know a good number of people that are popping in here. Uh, Peter Voss. Uh, food with less nutrients has been the agenda for years and dumbing down the population, the dumbing down of the population right in front of us. You know, they tried to steal. They've been trying to steal the concept of cryptocurrency. They've been trying to uh, steal and, uh, and the information that we know. We, we're sitting here. I'm sitting here in front of a computer that I can access any information anywhere in the world right now. I can do it on Google. I can do it on many different sources. I can educate myself with a lot. Um, however, uh, the powers that be are trying to recreate uh, how uh, what that reality looks like, uh, yet here we have everything uh, right in front of us. So I just wanna go back and put up some of these uh, key points here because it's, because it's important, um, you know, as, as, you, as you go through. You know, it's, it's, so, it's so critical, you know, you have to understand, you know, you have to really relate back you know, to uh, to everything. And this, again, is so critical in the cryptocurrency space because, again, this was a financial liberation. This is giving people all around the world uh, an, an opportunity to control uh, their own outcome, their own uh, destiny. Uh, and so we, we definitely need to make sure that we represent. We definitely need to make sure that we protect uh, and we continue to protect. So if I missed over on some of you, uh, some of the uh, points that you guys threw up here, definitely, uh, you know, definitely uh, appreciate uh, all the comments uh, that you guys are are posting here, because this is really, really uh, important. You know, so so let me uh, let me go back through here. Let's see. I, I know you guys have other comments, but anyhow, uh, let me let me keep getting into this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go. Okay. I like how people are, you know, putting up some uh, some uh, statements here. But this is 
this is the difference between the United States and other countries, um, not to you know misrepresent or undermine anything that anybody says. Um, but it, you know, I like this in Sweden. We're free to speak. Uh, we don't need guns for that. That's that's true. We don't need them here either. Um, but that's not the point, you know. So the the de we could have a long, deep rooted conversation on the significance of the Second Amendment, what's rooted in the culture in the United States, in the defense and protection uh, of uh, you know of this. So so anyhow, um, let me let me get into it. Uh, let's let's get into what we what we really need to talk about, which is what's going on over at Nexo, what's going on over at Bitru, what's potentially going on at, at these others in Celsius and MyCred, because it's it's really uh, uh, concerning uh, what's going. Yo, what's up, George? Uh, good to see you on. This is great. You know, uh, really uh, appreciate everybody bouncing on this morning, and we are going to uh, keep going. Uh, through this. So I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, hopefully that works. Uh, I'm using Streamlab. I prefer using OBS for doing this. I just wanted to see how this would, how we'd interact a little bit more using this platform. You know, we've been using it over the past few weeks. Sharing the screen is the difficult part uh, because I can add it, um, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. What's up, Leo? Uh, good to see you on here. Um, let me see here. Okay. So let's, let's, let's pop this up. Boom, I know you guys are gonna see a lot and let's dig into this. Now, why am I talking about Nexo? And I guess I should probably preface this um, a little bit because we've seen over the past number of weeks, uh, individuals being liquidated. Thursday, uh, we just interviewed someone that was working with Nexo that did get liquidated. Um, about a month ago, we saw very similar things happen on Bitru where individuals got liquidated. Now there's this common theme uh, that's been running uh, through uh, each each and every one of these scenarios um, as we talk to them um, and as we're digging down and we're drilling down is that there have been technical glitches potentially um, that have uh, that have uh, interfered uh, with each one of these individuals opportunity uh, to cure or top up their account when their account valuation dipped below, um, a certain level. Now, if, if you think about this and, and why am I bringing this up is because people are losing money. Now, people are losing money because they're trusting in a system. Now, you're trusting in a system that may not be 100% secured uh, in that uh, or, or, or uh, deserving of that trust. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, if they're, if they're not prepared technically to manage uh, your, your, your holdings in such a way uh, that you can easily be liquidated, then we have problems. If they're having technical issues, then they owe a significant duty and responsibility to those that are investing. Now, on, on Thursday night on the deep dive, we drew comparisons uh, between an investment platform and a borrowing lending platform. Nexo is not an investment platform. Nexo is a lending borrowing op, uh, platform, meaning that I can deposit my money, basically lending it to Nexo, so to speak, like a bank account, and they pay me out a percentage. Um, I can also decide to borrow. Look, enjoy our lowest crypto credit line rates ever. Borrow now at 5.9%. If I look at this, and, 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 and the concerning part about all this is, is that as you dig through Nexo and any of the others, and we're going to talk more about this tomorrow night on the roundtable as well, but I think it's it's really significant that we keep drilling down and talking about this concept um, and the significance of what this represents uh, because people are being liquidated. Now, if I get onto Nexo and, and I'm single out, singling out Nexo because it's one of the top platforms that is doing this um, where they're highly promoting this borrowing uh, platform where you get this instant credit line, don't sell your crypto. Don't lose the upside potential. Keep it and get instant credit line from Nexo. I, I need to keep drilling into this. And Chip and I, you know, again, we interviewed someone on Thursday. We're going to do more about this tomorrow night. We need to understand the concept of what's happening here. So it's not so much that individuals uh, are getting on, astute individuals that may understand that when you stake or when you're uh, staking your crypto in order to borrow against it, that it's basically a margin account. 
on its face, this does not look like a margin account. On its face, this looks like a bank lending platform in the verbiage, in the appearance of it, in every aspect of this website. It looks just like if I was going to my bank and I wanted to borrow money, this is the process. If I borrow money from my bank, I'm not in, I have no fear that the valuation is going to upset you know, my loan to where I'm going to have to lose my collateral unless I'm not paying back my loan, if I had to stake collateral. In most cases, you go to a bank, you're not staking collateral in order to borrow. Your collateral is your credit that has been built up and it's a whole system that's in that a structured system uh, that the world has somehow agreed to living within. The exciting part about this space specifically um, about uh, the crypto space and what I like about it is that it's decentralized in nature to where the mechanism can potentially allow people to get money that might not have had access to these loans. Is this the right way though? If you're staking your digital asset as collateral two for one, you have to put up two XRP for everyone, two Bitcoin for everyone you get. Do you wanna do that? Hey, that's up to you if you wanna do that. The risk is that this isn't a normal lending scenario, volatility of the marketplace, devaluation of your, of your, of your staked asset uh, means that the value to loan ratio changes um, and then you are in a position that becomes upside down. And if you don't cure that upside down scenario, you get liquidated, meaning that your two for one that you staked disappears. Um, and and the and the exchange gets it. Now, if it was clearly represented that this is the situation, I'm gonna come back to the chat in a minute. So uh, sorry if I'm ignoring you guys, but I can't see the chat with the way I have this system set up, but I'll get back to you guys in a minute here to get some feedback and comments. The way this system is set up here is that it does not represent at all that this is a margin account. This is extremely, extremely uh, disingenuous, you know. So, you know, here's their their software is the next. So, look at this. Where on this does it tell me anything that I could be liquidated? Nowhere, zero, no representation of liquidation in this scenario. Again, on its face. Now, you know, if we have to keep digging down, I don't know. I haven't found it yet. I just want to stay on my homepage. I don't want to, have to drill down to try to figure out where this is. That's not my, you know, why do I have to read the, the fine print in order to understand that this lending platform is a little bit uh, uh, risky, maybe a lot risky. <laughs> um, so, you know, but nowhere on here do they even mention that there's a risk other, other than it's excellent, it's great service, great rates all over the world, people love it. You know, I'm, I'm seeing some problems here. Now, the problem isn't in the concept, I think the concept is sound. I like the idea. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, allow people to borrow against their digital assets. Stake a collateral, I'll lend you money. If you don't pay me back, I liquidate what you put in there. It makes sense. I'm gonna take your repayment uh, of your loan from the collateral that you staked. An easy decentralized system that allows anybody in the world uh, to get credit if you have something to stake. Now, the problem again here is they don't mention the margin aspect of this. They also have now been hiding behind technical glitches and flash crashes, like we talked about on Thursday, flash crashes that automatically liquidate your accounts. Then they need to give you a period of time to cure it, meaning you need to top up your account to bring the loan to value ratio back in line with what you borrowed based on what you're staked, what you have staked. Now, if they give you that opportunity, awesome. You're following within. As long as they spec it out and they tell you this is how it works, then that's great. If they don't tell you how it works and they're and they're preying on the naivete of individuals out there that think that this might just be a normal lending platform, that's a, a that's a different situation as well that we have to really address. But where does their duty and their responsibility lie even for the advanced user uh, of this platform, they still have a duty and responsibility to make sure that they're protecting uh, the, the process, which 
they ne they might not have been. And that's the biggest question. I don't have any feedback from Nexo. I'm reaching out. I want to talk to somebody at Nexo, get their side of the story. I think will be important. Now, the thing is, we're seeing the same exact thing from Celsius. Now, I've heard that Celsius has a mechanism in place to protect those flash crashes, uh, to protect you um, in, a, in a period, uh, giving you a, a certain set period of time to cure or top up the balance uh, to protect you. Now, that's important. I haven't seen that. Supposedly, Nexo had something similar in place, which we haven't seen. But again, the concerning part here is, is this continuous theme that all of them have made this seem extremely, extremely easy to do with no risk. So if there's no risk, then okay, but there is risk. Why don't they mention the risk? Why aren't they mentioning the margin aspect of it? You know, why aren't they they mentioning that you could be liquidated? Um, they're really not mentioning that, you know, and so so that is extremely, extremely concerning that they're not going to mention the fact that you could actually be defaulted on. Look, no origination fees, no withdrawal fees, no termination fees, early termination, no default, fee free. Great. What about the liquidation? What about the fact you can be liquidated? Why don't they mention that? Don't they owe their uh, their their users uh, a, a duty and a responsibility to let them know that they could be liquidated? Um, each and every single one of them has gone through this process. And again, I get the idea. The concept is sound. I like the concept. Makes a lot of sense. However, you owe your users a responsibility or you have a responsibility, you owe them a duty to protect them, to protect their interest and having a mechanism in place if there are flash crashes to make sure that people don't get liquidated in that split second drop in valuation on the digital currency market because it is speculative and it is very volatile. And there needs to be a mechanism to protect them, which there isn't. That's very concerning and troubling. Now, yeah, you know, we talked about Bitru before. Um, Bitru is of all of them. Um, and, and again, I'm not necessarily condoning, I'm not telling people to run over there and use Bitru, um, as I'm not telling you to use any platform. I don't care what you use. You want to use Coinbase, Uphold, BitMEX, Huobi. I don't care what country. And you, you make the decision what you feel the most comfortable with. I'm just showing you what's here. Now, Bitru, as you know, we've interviewed Curtis Wang. I thought Curtis Wang's a great guy. You know, I thought he was putting together, you know, a great project because he's doing something. The guy stepped out of his comfort zone to build a platform that most people would never do in their entire existence in their life. Did he do everything the exact way that I agree with? Not necessarily um, based on some of the, you know, self-insured model and all of that. We talked to him about it. He came on the on on the chain. We interviewed him about it, and he talked about it. Um, but Bitru is, and I don't know. You guys probably can't see this because it's probably blacked out. Um, I don't know why my my uh, my uh, stuff gets blacked out with this this program I use for highlighting. But I'm going to undo it. But Bitru is the only one that talks about a lending pledge rate, a mandatory delivery rate the risk rating, uh, floating pledge rate, uh, and, 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 and elsewhere, and how they're going to reach out to you and contact you. Now, even with this in place, you know, with, with no one variable, um, there were issues on the Bitru platform to where people got liquidated, uh, which is extremely concerning. Oh, okay. I'm back to the chat. Uh, Farshad, what's up, man? Uh, I really appreciate uh, the, uh, the, the support. Um, and that's great. Um, now I'm getting back into the chat. So we're going to dig in and get some uh, feedback from people. But, you know, thumbs up to you, Farshad. You've always been a great supporter. Really appreciate, you know, everything uh, that you've done uh, really to help uh, in this regard. So um, that's fantastic. Let me dig. We got Mr. BXRP in here with us as well. Um, good morning. Great to see you on. Uh, glad to see you here. Uh, and let's see who else do we have uh, that bounced in here that with some comments. Uh, we got CAK, uh, one of my early, early, early uh, viewers when I first got started. Uh, appreciate seeing you here. Uh, Dan Dan is on here as well. 
Um, so really, really nice. Um, and, and I like some of these uh, statements, man. You know, Mr. B, appreciate that. Uh, Mr. B and I, I actually met in person one time. He lives about uh, three, four hours from me. <laughs> so it doesn't always uh, happen often. Uh, but I was glad for that one opportunity we had to sit down uh, over dinner and, and talk. So, um, but David D, man, this is uh, great information, Jeff. People don't understand LTV collateral margins. It's part of the problem with naive participants in crypto and why regulations need to be in place to protect the people. Uh, we need some self-regulation as well, not just government regulation. We need self-regulation. The community needs to regulate the platform. We can't all just, you know, we can't be sheeple uh, led to be sheeple led to the slaughter. You know, we have to be in control of our outcome. We have to be in control of the destiny that we're setting in front of us. We're not all going to be builders in the space, but we can all hold them accountable in the space. So that is probably one of the most critical aspects of what's going on in a decentralized environment is that we hold them accountable, accountability. As I'm accountable for uh, defending, being defender of the last existing living lemon tree in this post-apocalyptic world, that's my responsibility. But you know, but we're we're all responsible to this crypto space, getting the information out there, holding uh, Nexo and uh, Celsius and Bitru and MyCred, and the list goes on and on and on, holding them accountable uh, to the community. Now George says, "I'm in crypto to change my life." not to make loans uh, with it. I really don't understand why people are doing that. So there's a whole host of reasons why people want to put up the loans. I've been invested uh, in, uh, in P2P lending for, for years. Um, I think it's great. I was on a, pro a platform called Prosper. I was probably one of the first uh, uh, investors in that space, meaning lending out to other people. What a great mechanism. Uh, but here's a, a solution where it can become decentralized, where if I have collateral, I've invested in something, I don't want to sell that, that item, whatever it might be, in this case, cryptocurrency. I want to keep my possession of it, but I want to stake it as collateral to borrow against it instead of going to a bank and paying them interest um, and going through the whole process of what it takes to actually borrow that money. I want to take my invested collateral, stake it, borrow against it, and go on with my life and pay it back. Now, others are staking it, borrowing against it, taking the money and reinvesting it uh, from an investment perspective to take advantage of the market. Completely different situation. Um, now, that's a volatile, higher risk proposition to where you have a higher risk of losing, but you have a higher risk tolerance. Now, if you're working on a trade account, in a margin and you have a margin account that's basically you're 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 playing with the house's uh uh money so to speak except it's the house's money that you borrowed not that you've won so if you've taken your investment profits and reinvest the profits that's the house's money that obviously you don't want to lose it but if you lost it it's not your money but now in the margin environment you're borrowing their money to reinvest to get a gain to pay them back uh to make mo money and leverage uh, additional monies. Now that puts us in a, in a precarious position, uh, mainly because of the risk. Now in this situation, um, you know, uh, in this situation, there's higher risk, there's high volatility. We're already in a volatile space. I'm going to go to our YouTube in a second. Um, and, and we're, we're coming up here. I'm, I'm going to go to our YouTube from the deep dive. There were some really, really solid comments that I need to read to you guys. Uh, before I do that, I want to post and recognize a few more people in the space that have uh, been with us for a really, really long time that are now part of the on the chain family. When you're part of the on the chain family, that has meaning. So, you know, we might not have tens of thousands of subscribers, but those subscribers that we do have are dedicated and committed uh, to, under to wanting to understand and learn and contribute uh, to this learning process that we're all doing here in the on the chain community. We appreciate it. I love it. Um, I love the feedback. I love the comments. I don't care if it's a comment on a video that's negative, you know, it's saying, hey, you know what? I don't agree with what you guys said. I'm so pissed off. I want to unsubscribe for your channel. And we've had some people say, I'm unsubscribing because you guys talk about XRP too much. Well, you know what? 
too bad. You know, we're going to talk about the cryptocurrency space and we're going to talk about what's critical at this moment in time. I'm not going to talk about some random project that's just uh, getting started that has no significance or relevance uh, to anyone's life at this point. Am I interested in the technology? Yes. But people want to understand the significance of what's going on. If we're going to talk about the political economic a aspect of it, if I'm going to sit here and talk with uh, the digital nomad investor and we're going to drill down into you know different concepts when he comes on the deep dive, then it's it's all important. There's nothing that we've brought to the stage on on the chain that's fluff or just nonsense. You know, it's all based on what from our perspective we think is important and we like to talk about. So um, so so that's important. I like that far shot. Yeah, it is XRP related a lot of it. So it's important. You know, we we want to know what's going on now. David D. You know, agreed, Jeff, on self regulation. Too many of the YouTubers are purveyors of misinformation. Exactly. That's exactly it. What kills me is that a lot of it uh, dives into negativity. So you're either you're either a purveyor of FUD or FOMO, and in on either scenario, there's a higher propensity of misinformation. So if I'm if I'm participating in strictly FOMO, then my FOMO info is to get people fired up and excited to invest in the space, but it might not be accurate information. Um, and we've seen that in the stock investing space and everywhere for a long time. On the FUD side, and we're seeing this from the mainstream media, we're getting enough there. Why do we need it uh, in the YouTube space? It's our, uh, you know, I, I feel as, as I've been at this for a while, you know, bringing the people together and having this community, we've earned the respect of our followers. Again, we don't have tens of thousands, but those that we have are very, very sharp and astute individuals. The feedback, the comments that we get are absolutely outstanding. And the individuals that we want to bring to the channel as we go through and we introduce uh, different people to the on the chain community uh, through our on the chain platform, which is going to develop and grow as we continue. Um, and a lot of it will be moved uh, to the website. Uh, as there's a lot of content we want to be able to bring and not worry about is YouTube going to censor us? Is YouTube going to demonetize us? We want to be able to provide, uh, you know, good direct contact to a select group of people uh, that want to follow us on the chain and everybody else that we're involved with. But anyhow, uh, too many of these guys care little about the details and more about lies, audience, and YouTube money. I like that. Read that comment over there. That That's important. You know, because I see it, you know, I'm, I look and I'm like, holy crap, this video got 10,000 views. What the hell are people looking at? What what in that video garnered 10,000 views? You know, it makes no sense. But it goes back to this idea that a lot of people just want to be fed information um, and and they want to sit back and, they you know, a lot of people want to feel good about the investment they got into. So they want to know that they're in a community with others that feel good about that, which is awesome. And that's why we have the community together. Then we have others that want to feel, uh, to get patted on the back, say, hey, all these people made a bad choice too. I didn't make it on myself. It wasn't my own responsibility. Everybody did it. But we're in this together. We have to educate ourselves. And that's why we need to hold uh, platforms uh, responsible in a decentralized mechanism as part of the community. Really, really critical. Let me get some of this Segfredo here. And I want to, man, Farshad, uh, appreciate that. Man, you, Farshad, you're awesome. Hopefully you went to the gym this morning or at least got your workout in. Um, it's funny, one of my buddies also, you know, he's into working out all the time. And about 10 years ago, I set up a gym in my house um, and converted it. We've got the martial arts area over here with the uh, Kung Fu dummy. Um, we've got the, the pads and everything over there. I've got the weight rack over here. The whole floor, it's all padded. Um, and so, but now I've got this little studio I have to slide out of the way. But um, we've been working out of the house uh, for, for like 10 years. And I haven't, other than going to uh, Kung Fu classes, um, I've been working it out in the house and it's the best thing that I ever did. Um, and so, uh, I would highly recommend that if you guys are able to do that, but, um, anyhow, David D, um, on the chain is about who, 
uh, not how many. Uh, there you go, David D. I appreciate that. I'll take your 4,000 watches and participants and 20,000 channels to get. Man, I, you know, I appreciate that as well. You know, man, that's uh, that's exactly how we feel. <laughs> so, you know, we've got a great solid community as we're growing and growing and growing, and we want this to continue in the long term. Plus, the way we're structuring this is going to be for uh, mass mainstream adoption. We want people to come and say these guys understand that are providing you know quality information that we're all going to learn from and we're all going to grow with. So that that's key. Huh. <laughs> um, let me see. Look at this. Are the walls padded? That's that's a great idea. You know, I never thought about padding the walls. I've got Soji screens um, all around me. So um, the Soji screens aren't padded, but, um, you know, but it's interesting, especially I get my son and his friends out here uh, working with the sticks or whatever. I, I forbid them from using that. One day I came out and he has his size swords. Now my son's 10. He's been doing karate since he was about uh, four years old. Um, and now I get a little bit of resistance and pushback, but he hasn't been able to do anything now for a month and a half and he won't work out with me. You know, I got him to work out once uh, with the sticks. Um, but but a number of years ago, I said, that's it. You guys aren't, aren't messing with the sticks. One of his friends, we were, uh, I was training him with the sticks and we we're having fun and everything. And my son has super, you know, really, really good control over, over his weapon ability. And, um, and one of his friends that we were working out with came up behind me and, and hit me with a stick across, across the side of the head um, from behind. And I thought we were done. I was picking some stuff up and he went whack right on the side. Um, and it was crazy because, um, and that was a number of years ago, but I saw like, uh, I had like a halo around my vision for a little while. It was almost like tunnel vision. And then I had a, a detachment, uh, not of the retina, but little floaty things in my eye. So I was at a meeting and I said, okay, you know, I, I waited like 30 minutes and it cleared up. And that night I had to go to a meeting. I'm sitting in the meeting and that's when this little floaty thing detached from my eye. And I was like, I'm like, holy crap. I started sweating and I got to start getting all freaked out, um, ran home. I was like, oh my God, we gotta, I gotta get to the hospital and figure this out. And uh, then went to the eye doctor. But once you get these floaty things in your eyes, forget about it. It's there forever. Uh, you have to get used to it. And then the same exact thing happened with a buddy of mine uh, but it was at our in our kung fu class uh somebody had hit him and he also got he thought he had a detached retina but it was just a floaty thing in his eye um so i, I haven't been to my kung fu class in about a year now injuries or whatever but it was funny i was the only one wearing goggles i, I there were sunglasses but like a goggle like protective sports uh uh glass glasses and the our uh, seafood would make fun of us. So this is my buddy and I, we both, we're the only two wearing these glasses. Anyhow, I don't know where I got on this sidetrack talking about, talking about stuff like that. Um, you guys want to hear about, about cryptocurrency, not about getting hit in the eye. So <laughs> full contact uh, at the, uh, at the OTC studios. That's it. That's it. I mean, it would be, I, I can't imagine if Chip and I had to record in the same space, it would be a constant. <laughs> Full, full contact. You better believe it. Let's come in here. It's going to be full contact cryptocurrency discussion. That's how we're going to do it over here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, all right, where was I? All right. I want to get into this. I'm not going to show the screen, but I'm going to read this to you because I think it was critical. So, so um, Thursday night on the deep dive, we, we had an interview we talked about uh, Celsius and Nexo and all of that. Now, one of the common themes that we saw from Bitru to uh, Nexo when people got liquidated is that people couldn't access the platform. So going back into that, they couldn't access the platform. They wanted to top up or they topped up. Their top up never reached the platform. Now, this goes back to the duty that they owe. This is the responsibility uh, to the users of the platform to make sure that when they top up, it's topped up. If, if you're in a position where your loan to value ratio is imbalanced, give the people an opportunity to top up. We're not in a, in a, in a, in a high risk um, investing uh, scenario. We're in a borrowing scenario. This is the failure at this point of the Nexo and the Bitru and other platforms 
uh, utilizing this uh, solution, which again, from a from a concept is great, uh, but the way they're the way they're rolling it out, when you have technical issues, very very problematic. So here's a comment. I'm going to read down some of this stuff. I think it's so important uh, that we read through uh, some of these comments that came in on Thursday, uh, mainly because um, you know mainly because it it is actually showing uh, exactly. Uh, what is happening in this space. So this is, and I don't know, the comment is public now because it's on YouTube. I don't know if I want to read out is the name of the person that posted it. Um, I guess I could because it's already public. Um, but this is coming from Diesel Hound. Um, so he said, uh, Celsius fund reaching out uh, to their customers, delay and warning messages, no notifications in some cases. System crashed at a vital moment during the, the flash crash. People not getting getting credited hours after funds were sent. Nexo moving funds around prior to the crash. Liquidations happened in the middle of the night in Europe. Uh, there were threatening letters to users. Um, offer was borderline bribery um, based on what they, they had made in order to uh, uh, pay them out. Uh, blaming inability to pay dividends on coronavirus. Not blaming the crash on coronavirus and blaming us the individuals in that case for mismanagement of their funds. It's non-SEC compliant. Uh, jurisdiction of uh, Nexo is in the terms and condition. That's something, he's just uh, statements here. Misleading marketing. Exacerbated the crash by uh, market selling large percentage of customer funds up to 90% in some cases causing a cascade of liquidation. Um, dodgy terms and conditions. Now, if you get into those terms and conditions, you're putting yourself in a risky position as well. You have to take some responsibility for where you're staking and where you're borrowing, reading those terms and conditions. But if they're hiding them in the small print, makes it very, very difficult and also puts everybody in a spot where um, it becomes very high risk. Small repayment claims, but they never explain how they calculate the repayment. Cust uh, customer service pointing at vital information about liquidation in a blog ra rather than terms and condition. Um, then they blame the user for not reading the blog when stipulating the contract. Uh, flash liquidation done within one hour or even less late at night. Not giving users 24 hours to rebalance their accounts. Um, so, so imagine that. Imagine all these problems. Um, you know, so disgruntled users and investors. There, there's a lot going on uh, in regard. I mean, this is, you know, it's amazing, really, really amazing uh, the comments uh, from here. You know, so that's just that's just one uh, uh, one comment. Now let me go back and read. So, so then we have uh, uh, from again from Diesel Hound. Uh, you know, with all this, I you know I want proof my assets were sold at the prices that Nexo was saying. How do we even know the actual amount sold and what prices? Uh, Nexo has no transparency, you know, how do we now trust them? Um, you know, what, you know, so there's a lot of concern, you know, did, was there some, uh, you know, fraud committed? Um, crack and exchange record records, uh, you know, of what was happening with Nexo because that's where they're moving their, their funds. Um, what exactly was going? So this is concern within the community right now. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting when Mullet had responded here, and you guys can go on and read this, but a uh, simple solution, if you don't want to get liquidated, don't leverage your asset. Um, you know, if uh, analysts could predict the future, they'd be rich and not giving advice. People get wiped out in the stock markets every day. So the difference is, you know, yes, if people are playing the margin, even using these investment platforms, but again, on its face in that investment and that uh, borrowing platform, they don't talk about liquidation. They don't talk about the margin. That's where it's a little bit skewed because if you go and you're trading margin on, a, on an investing uh, trading platform, you know the risk that you're getting into. If you're just in a, in a borrowing scenario, you don't. It's, it's not self-evident. Um, and that's where Diesel Hound responded, said, not that simple, made a deposit of XRP to add collateral in the morning, uh, took Nexo 10 hours to post it to the account. 
Because of this, it triggered his first liquidation. Uh, they admitted and reversed the first liquidation. Um, he says that he had enough collateral on the sidelines to deposit. That first 10 hour delay in deposit and Nexo moving 12 million plus XRP to Kraken in the morning, many hours before people got liquidated, discouraged him from depositing more collateral before he went to sleep. Um, his deposits would not post. Um, also that night, many users could not deposit collateral because Nexo was inoperable. Just like with Bitru, Bitru went inoperable for a period of time. So there were technical issues related so the users couldn't get on the platform uh, to top up. Now, if that happens, forget about it. Bring that to a court and your platform went down and you're not allowing users to do what they did. Now, on Thursday night, we also read an article about BitMEX and Huobi also admitting that they their technology couldn't manage the sell-off, which caused their systems to crash. Your system crashed. As far as I'm concerned, you're over. You owe all those funds uh, to be returned. It's your responsibility. I don't care. You have no excuse uh, to say that your technology couldn't support it. You're the owner of the technology. You need to forecast every scenario and be prepared for it. If you don't have the money to have the redundancy built in, that's your problem. Uh, the fact now that you owe all these people money back because your system crashed and you wouldn't allow them uh, to, to save uh, them from being liquidated, yet you allow the system to liquidate them anyways, your responsibility uh, in this environment is to pay them back every last dime, whoever you are, whatever platform it is, you cannot hide behind lack of technology and technology concerns. Uh, that isn't a valid uh, defense. You cannot hide behind that. You're responsible, whether it's Nexo, whether it's Hobi, whether it's BitMEX, those are separate. Those are trading platforms. Nexo, Celsius, MyCred, Bitru, every last dime. In my opinion, if you have a technical glitch, automatically, you need to pay those people back. If it's outside of the technical glitch, you guys need to discuss that and figure it out. Technical glitch, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you lost, pay it back, move on, that's it. Bitru, you're self-insured for those scenarios. Take the money out of your pocket and pay everybody back and make them right. They may have done it already. Nexo supposedly is holding custody and insurance and all this stuff. If you have a technical issue, um, that's what your insurance is for. Pay the people back. Here, um, uh, Diesel Hound said he was liquidated at night in my sleep with no notification, no email, over 250,000 XRP gone plus BTC. 250,000 XRP liquidated. Um, now he's leveraging the loans, but their platform went down. Now, if you have proof their platform went down at that period of time, again, it's, in my opinion, clear. Yes, leverage loans are risky, but the Nexo platform is the reason I lost my funds, not market volatility. I had chosen Celsius, I would not have no losses, maybe. So Celsius has a different trigger mechanism in place uh, in order to, uh, to protect that. So, um, so, the, so that, that's crazy. That's some crazy responses. You know, you think about it. I mean, just think about, you know, what, what this means, you know, overall, um, man, uh, it's, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. You know, that, uh, that we're, we're in a, in a scenario, uh, right now, uh, that that this is what we're what we're seeing, but again, it's an unregulated space. Um, however, the laws are on the books. We, you don't need regulation to have logic and rational thought process and the laws uh, to maintain uh, what's going on here. It's right. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. As a community, a self-regulated community, we hold them responsible. We bring them to the crypto court. So let's bring Nexo and Celsius and MyCred and Bitru and the whole list. I don't know. They need to come to the crypto court and explain their actions and explain why their technical system crashes that cause people to get liquidated in those scenarios 
um, why they're not responsible for it. I say they are. Oh man, here you go. Uh, Diesel Hound, I didn't even see that you were in the stream. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, uh, really, really great. Oh man, I missed this too. Far shot, appreciate it. I was focused on the other thing. Um, <clears throat> if you need to loan your crypto, then you're in invested too much. Um, very, that's very uh, possible. I always say don't invest more than you can afford to lose. But if you're investing in anything, that money that you put in that investment, forget about it. It's there. If it's a long-term hold, if you're not trading, if it's a trade account, be very concerned. If your trade account is $10,000 and you're trying to make your five, 10, whatever percent gain, uh, manage it and monitor it on a regular basis. Have your stop losses, whatever you're doing if you're trading. If it's a long-term hold, you put it there, you're not touching it, forget it exists. Um, and that's a great point for our shot. I appreciate it. Um, now, um, whiskey, <laughs> whiskey. All right. So diesel hound, you're, you're here in the stream, uh, had to file an F bar with the IRS. Nexo gave me a uh, Cayman Island address. There you go. Uh, so I, I guess there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, uh, what is this? E Monty. E Monty. Um, uh, my motto, never borrow. I use Nexo Celsius and crypto app for good interest rates for stable coins. Uh, never had any that, that they're paying you interest versus borrowing. I think my point with this whole thing is again, I love the concept. I love the concept of this borrowing banking concept. I just believe we need to self-regulate and make sure that they're being honest in the methodology at which they're liquidating people. First and foremost, they need to let people know that you can be liquidated. So, you know, like Farshad saying, but if if you're going to borrow against your, your crypto, I don't know that there's anything inherently wrong with that uh, necessarily, if that's what you want to do. However, there's risk involved in it. They need to be very, very clear right on that home page. As soon as you go in there, it needs to be stipulated and stated, by the way, borrowing against your crypto is high risk. Why? Because it's a margin account. Why? Because you can be liquidated. No fees, no interest, risk of liquidation. It's, it's clear and simple. Label it. If you're smoking cigarettes, you know, there's a warning thing on the side of it may cause cancer. If you're smoking, then that's your responsibility. You know, that's personal responsibility with the right information. You hide the information from the users. You bring people in to utilize your platform. You owe them a responsibility. You have a duty. So that's critical. Um, uh, David D, um, I'll have to go back and watch that stream. If you're a US citizen, this is why you want to deal. Man, look at that. This is also so critical. You know, and this is something that, you know, in the beginning, you know, like with Binance and Bitstamp, you know, the, in, the, in the heyday, Bitstamp, I used Bitstamp. It wasn't in the US. I was so concerned to use Bitstamp. Um, and and, and I, was, I was more concerned to use Binance. I remember the first time I used Binance, I'm like, hey, is this, this is in China. Uh, they're moving it over to Hong Kong. Now it's in Singapore, Malaysia, whatever. I was really, really, really concerned. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm going to try it. Used it, decided. Same as David D is saying, I'm only going to use a US based exchange. Uh, even if I see that there's better options outside the US, my only recourse in the United States is to use a US exchange. Um, same thing if you're in Asia. Your only recourse, if you have recourse, is to use an exchange in your region, Australia, Europe. I don't care where in Europe. Your only recourse is to use a local exchange to where you can hold them responsible. Um, Nexo, if they're in in uh, in in wherever they are in the Cayman Islands, you have no recourse, um, and that that's super problematic. They need to change that. We need to have again deal with U.S. regulation laws on the books because forget about the regulation. There's laws on the books that hold them accountable uh, for certain action, for predatory lending, etc. A lot of things happen outside in these margins, and you know even now we're seeing the government kind of dwell into that gray zone of uh, of predatory lending and all of that. 
we have to be very, very cognizant going back to what I talked about first, which is personal responsibility um, based on our freedoms, our laws of action, whether it's politically or our self-interest, our freedom, whether it's monetary uh, versus fiat or uh, crypto. Uh, Farshad, your digital asset is your life. Don't take a chance because it's your future investment. If I'm invested heavily in a stock, I don't know that I'd borrow against it. However, again, you know, it, imagine, imagine you have, and people do this. This is a legit, and that's why they're building this mechanism. So imagine I have a million dollars in stock and I need to borrow $200,000 for whatever reason. I want to stake uh, that stock and borrow against it without liquidating my position in that stock in order to borrow against it so I can use that money for something else. Now, if it's to go buy a physical, an asset, a depreciating asset like a TV um, or living expense or something like that, I agree with Farshad. Don't borrow against your crypto if you're if if you're if you've overextended yourself. Um, however, borrow if you want to borrow against your crypto because you're putting it into potentially another investment vehicle, but you're planning on paying it back. I don't know. That's your decision. You have to decide. However, that's where that leverage makes sense uh, to where you can leverage one asset over the other. It's like having a property and you leverage a little extra on the mortgage to take mortgage out to invest in another property so you can buy another rental property. Leveraging <clears throat> leveraging one asset over the other. Uh, that could, you know, but you have to be careful. Definitely have to be careful. Uh, now, let's see what else we got here. Man, what's up? Look at that. Boom, Farshad, what's up? Man, thank you very much for that. Man, you've been... Farshad, the number one sponsor um, of uh, of On The Chain, how to review this morning, Saturday. Uh, he is our number one sponsor this morning. So I appreciate that. Uh, Farshad, a uh, big uh, shout out to, uh, I believe uh, you have uh, Blue Bunny, right? Is that what it is? Uh, Blue Bunny ice cream or something like that over in uh, your area. So shout that out uh, to Farshad in, in, that, in that area. Um, really appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, what is this? JX. Yes, again, they will not be able to cope. Uh, same with what happened before in the last one where all exchanges ran out of assets. Oh, that's, that's a great point. You know, that's a really, really good point is, you know, what's happening with the exchanges. The exchanges have responsibility, you know, and so we saw some exchange issues again. Man, I remember... So this this is when you know the big boom. This is the cryptos going up here. End of seventeen, beginning of eighteen. People were registering like crazy. They didn't have the technology yet prepared for that ramp of that boom. And then on the other side of it, there were a lot of exchange issues where people weren't able to sell uh, because of technical problems. Um, and that that's. <laughs> You know, I got to believe even if we saw the stock market going off that cliff like that, we'd probably see some of those platforms go down. Blue Bunny. There you go. Blue Bunny in Texas. Uh, far shot with the Blue Bunny ice cream. So if you guys are in Texas, stock your fridge with uh, Blue Bunny. Um, I think that's important. <laughs> uh, man, uh, let's see here. Eh, da -da -da, here we go. Jade. Jade, what's up? Good to see you here. Uh, borrowing really isn't a great idea. Can't trust any of those exchanges. That's a big, that's a big concern, you know, being able to trust. Do we trust those exchanges? You know, you know, it's a, definitely problematic. Uh, David D, the difference between stock and crypto is regulation. Markets that close and time to cure your imbalance. Great point as well on the regulation side. Um, lack of regulation has created this wild west environment. However, right is right and wrong is wrong. If you know, there, there's still legal responsibility of that exchange to protect the asset of an individual and not falsely advertise or market in order to suck people into a platform without telling them what the platform is. So with or without regulation, the laws uh, should still uh, maintain. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm not quoting any law other than there's laws on the books that, uh, you know, have deceptive marketing uh, uh, rules in place uh, to where people can't falsely market. So, man, what what a what a 
an amazing stream today. I don't know. This has been, and I was going to cut. I was like, oh, what are we going to talk about? You know, we're going to go through this. I'll be done after 45 minutes. Three hours later, um, I'm taking on uh, DNI territory here. I'm um, trying to uh, compete for the longest stream. Someone just got in the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest stream ever. I don't even, I can't even imagine. I'm an hour plus and I'm ready uh, and I'm done. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, down with, oh, Carl Lewis was on last night. We did a, an interesting live stream last night doing a little bit of open mic. We're going to, we're trying this open mic concept. Uh, we're going to do another one on Monday. We're going to get Jerry Hall and uh, XRB Carolina on there on Monday. We're kind of in the background trying to make sure everything is functioning the right way. Interesting idea. Get people in, talk. Awesome. <clears throat> so let's see what we got here. Uh, Ayodeji Alatona. Uh, borrowing is not a great idea, uh, but if you have to make uh, sure your LTV is low, um, I, I use Nexo. Didn't get liquidated uh, because I took LTV 20% so I can sleep at night. So there's a lot more to the story. Um, I agree. Um, we need to look at all the aspects of it. I'm just looking on its face. On the back end structure, I'm sure they explain the risk when you start doing the loan. It's on its face, um, which is uh, which is what I'm reflecting on. And then forget about the loan to value ratio is when they have the technical problem that doesn't allow you to, to, to top up and cure and they liquidate you regardless and they haven't even allowed you technically to top up. So you know the risk you took. You know, you're leveraging money that I borrowed, um, but now you shut off your computer, which is the only mechanism for me to top up my loan to you, but you shut off my access. And then you say, sorry, you didn't cure, I'm liquidating you. So you know what? Deceptive practice, whether it's your pro your uh your fault or not, uh directly, if you impact, if you shut the computer off or if it was a technical failure you still have that responsibility to main that tech uh, technical access and not get uh, allow someone to be liquidated or you have to just call it quits. That's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> DNI test software for three hours. That was, that was hilarious. Yeah, that was awesome. Do we think regulation will ever come? Yes, I do. I believe it's on its way. Um, Far shot DNI is just great. Oh, it's awesome. He can talk and talk and talk and talk. And he's got so much stuff, you know, knowledge coming out up here. Um, let me see. Sorry, on the phone. Good morning, everyone. George, man, you were in the beginning. You said, what's up to everybody? And then you get on the phone. You're going to have to go back and watch. So um, have you seen the emails where Nexo admitted their uh, systems have crashed? Um, I do believe those, uh, emails are out there. Um, and so, you know, there is some acknowledgement of it just as Huobi acknowledged and BitMEX acknowledged and Bitru acknowledged, um, that there were system, uh, software crashes out there. Um, obviously that's a big part of it, but if individuals weren't able to gain access to it, um, there it's problematic. Again, I haven't spoken to Nexo. I'm just giving feedback based on information that I have that I've, I've read up to this point. Um, we'll love to have Nexo on the show. Let them uh, share their details. As I we had uh, Curtis Wang on to talk about Bitru. Uh, really appreciated every minute of him being on the show. Was awesome. Uh, got to know him a little bit different uh, when we did that after show with him, as we've done with many others in the space. Um, which has been great. You know, we've had a chance to interview a lot of CEOs of platforms. Would love to have someone come on from Nexo um, and dive deeper into it. We're going to have other individuals uh, come on and, and actually see what's going on. So here you go. Differences, Nexo admitted it and then told us we were all lying. There you go. So JX, uh, glad that you're here. Um, and there you go. So the fact that they have it, uh, there's written documentation of it. There's also really bizarre uh, Twitter exchanges and Chip uh, can talk about that a little bit more tomorrow night uh, when we're uh, airing the round table. He can talk about his tweet that got a ridiculously long uh, comment chain uh, directly from Nexo. So, um, so that's something 
uh, that will definitely, definitely uh, be addressed. So with that, we're like 80 hours into this stream. Uh, it was great having you guys on, uh, great feedback, great comments. Uh, and man, that's it. I, you know, it's been, uh, it's been great. Oops. Sorry. Uh, one, one, uh, less, hang on a second here, reach out to Dan Shat at my credit and universal protocol Alliance is formal pay, former PayPal and head of credit and LBA. Uh, David D, uh, will definitely do that chip. If you could, uh, grab that, I can't copy and paste it. If you want to copy and paste it, that will be awesome. And we'll definitely work through that and try to reach out to Dan Shad. So we'll, we'll get that going. All right, guys, this was phenomenal. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys on tomorrow night, Sunday, check out the, uh, the, the call-in show on Monday night. Uh, we'll be doing that call-in show. You'll be on with Jerry Hall and XRP Carolina. We'll be managing in the background, making sure everybody uh, uh, gets on. You want to get on. That'll be awesome. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, uh, Chip and I are going to be doing more, uh, uh, you know, conversation, crypto conversation over there. Well, that's Jerry's show. It's called Crypto Conversations or Market Conversations. But Chip and I are going to have uh, more dialogue, let's say, on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday night, uh, Chip does uh, a live segment on the XRP Minute live stream on Wednesday night. Thursday, we have Deep Dive. Uh, Friday, we have shows. Saturday, there's shows coming from everywhere. Check out the other channel as well. The other channel, we've got Jerry Alls doing a daily update. You're going to start seeing some XRP Minute content over there, some HODL review content over there. Uh, those are all the short segments, uh, other recorded segments. Any of you guys get it. Go to onthechain.io, scroll to the bottom, register for our email database because that newsletter is going to start coming out soon. Uh, we're working on some details, but we want to make sure that we got you guys registered. That's the database. Forget about the YouTubes and all this other stuff. This is our core, uh, you know, our core base. So appreciate all you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, definitely look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until that time, I don't know. I think I'm out of here. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.